Am I guilty of backloading works into salvation? Well, this is an attack I've had come against the ministry different times throughout the years, and it's never made sense to me because, you see, that statement's not based in Scripture. Uh, you will never find a somebody being condemned for backloading works into salvation. The theory is, basically, that people say you just get saved by your belief and whatever else, and you don't have to do any kind of good works after that. It's just, and if I say, well, you're not doing good works, I don't think your salvation was real, oh, then you're backloading works, you know. Um, because, see, what the Bible teaches is that you're saved by grace through faith, not of works. Uh, works salvation is something that's never settled. All right, and that's why I reject this whole thing of I'm backloading works into salvation. That's not true. You can know that you are saved, but you're supposed to do good works. Okay, that's very important. I'm going to show you here from the scriptures what I'm talking about. Because one of the favorite go-to verses for anybody that wants to teach that you aren't saved by works is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. They stop at 9, which is interesting. And I believe completely that you get saved by grace through faith. God's grace, your faith. All right, and calling upon the name of the Lord, that's how you get God's attention. Yes, you have to believe the gospel. Certainly, you have to believe what's written in Scripture. But uh, you can't save yourself. But you have to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, just as you would call 911 if you have a problem. You call out to God for Him to save you. It's really not that difficult. But Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, all heretics will stop the, all these uh, heretical, you don't have to do any good works after salvation. They all stop at verse 9, and I'll show you the reason. Um, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Absolutely true. When God saves you, that's it. You're eternally secure. You are sealed until the day of redemption. 100%, that's what I teach. It's what I've always taught. But let's continue to verse 10 now, okay? Get uh, context. A text without a context is a pretext, all right? Um, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Unto good works. You head towards good works. Good works come after salvation. That's what this, the text is saying. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. If God is going to save you, then he expects something out of you. You become an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You are, it's now your job to go out and preach the gospel. All right? God expects things from you when he saves you. All right? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You become his bond servant. It isn't just a thing of, well, I can uh, pray a prayer, or I don't even need to pray a prayer, just believe. And now I have this magic... Uh, get out of hell card and I can just live my life just sinful and wicked and there's no difference between me and the lost world? No, no, no. See, all you wicked devils out there that believe that way, you need to repent because you never did. You never were truly sorry for your sin. And now you just think that you can live in perpetual sin. You say, well, you think that you can be perfect. I've never preached that either. Never preached sinless perfection. So you another know uh, verse of scripture here. Titus chapter three, verse 14. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Good works for necessary uses that they be not unfruitful. Right there, this tree, there's my old tracker over that way. The old vehicle, I'll point to it right there. But this tree right here is an apple tree. It's a really good apple tree. If you've watched older videos, it's usually covered in apples. But uh, unfortunately, that tree is not producing any apples this year. I don't know if it was because the uh, late frosts or something might have killed the blossoms, the, the uh, apple blossoms. I don't know what happened, but something happened and it's not producing fruit. All right? Um, it's supposed to produce fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. All right? Now, you say, well, it just had a bad year. Yeah, sure. Christians can have a bad year. I'm not saying you have to be the most rip roar and never make a mistake kind of Christian, you just never fall for sin or whatever. You know, everybody falls for sin. All of sin and comes short of the glory of God. I get that. I understand that. Okay? But if that tree doesn't produce fruit, if it never produces fruit, it was planted and it never produced one single apple and you let it go for 5, 10, 15, 20, 
hold it up to 30 years and it's just not, there's no fruit. You know what the Lord did back in the book of Matthew when he sees a fig tree, there's no fruit on it. He says, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And he curses the fruit, the fig tree and it dies. Um, it's a real dangerous thing to try to promote some kind of a system where there's no works that follow salvation. There's no changed life. You know, and again, I've, I've been saved a long time. I've talked to literally thousands of different people in person, online. I, talk, I don't film when I'm having interactions with people at stores or whatever else because it's, it's just a carnal, wicked thing in my opinion. I mean, some people, that's what they want to do or whatever, that's up to them. But for me, I don't film that stuff because you get a camera out, now they're, they're being recorded, they're going to give you different answers, they're going to, you know, they're not going to come under conviction. They don't want to cry. They don't want to, you know, it just messes everything up. So that's why I don't record things. But of all the people I've ever talked to, I've seen this thing where sometimes you'll get somebody that's just brand new saved. They might not be producing that much fruit. Uh, you might not be producing much fruit out there. Maybe you've just been saved for a little bit of time. Don't worry about it. Okay, it will come. Get people and, you know... Um, Boy, I wish I had your knowledge of the Bible, Brother Brian, and I wish I could speak to my family like you can speak to yours and, and whatever. Like, if you think that my family uh, respects me, well, you're wrong. They don't. Um, <clears throat> I don't get along great with my family members. Uh, most of them don't even contact me. Um, whatever. But uh, it takes a long time to learn the Bible. But to produce fruit, well, um, that will come in time as well. And you can't get all stressed out because, uh, you know, you're just not really seeing much fruit right away. But me as a preacher, I understand that there are a lot of people out there that are false converts. Leaves actually changing here. It's in August. It's kind of early this year, I think. But um, there's a red maple back there. Uh, but I always have to be careful that there might be people out there that are false converts like I once was. If somebody would have actually taken me to them, and there were a few that tried, there were actually a few Christians that tried to warn me about the path that I was on. And I, oh, I'm a Christian. And they just were kind of, you know, they, they knew, no, you're not. You're not a Christian, young man. Um, I had this uh, T-shirt on the one time, there was this big skull, and it said, um, I forget what it was, dead to the world, alive in Christ or something like this or whatever. And the guy, there was a guy at this uh, garage, car garage, and um, was it Brackbill's garage or something? And it was in Pennsylvania, but anyhow, it doesn't matter, probably not even there anymore. And, um, and he came up to me and he said, uh, young man, he said, do you realize that that shirt of yours, he said, it's actually loosely based on the scriptures? And I said, oh, I'm a Christian. And he just looked at me, I got my long hair, you know, and, and a heavy metal t-shirt on. And, and he just looks at me with this look. And, and my brother Dean is standing there beside me. He says, oh yeah, yeah. He said, we go to church. We're Christians. You know, and the guy just kind of, yeah, well, um, <laughs> and subject got changed and whatever. But um, I wish he would have said, you know, I need to talk to you, son. I wish he would have had the guts to actually tell me, um, you know, you need to be using the King James Bible. And these church buildings, they're not in Scripture. And you know what? That heavy metal music, that stuff's wicked. That's a conforming to the world. And uh, the Bible says that you're not to be conformed to the world. I wish he would have said some things to me. It would have saved me some time. Um, but as a preacher, I have to do that. People come up and they say, hey, I watch your videos. Well, praise the Lord. That's great to hear. Um, so tell me about yourself. Let me hear your testimony. I'd like to hear how you came to know the Lord. That's what I have to do. And you know, I've had people come up to me and, and um, some people I look at them and I think, outwardly, you don't really look like you're saved. Uh, you don't certainly look like you're conforming to the world, but I don't know. I have to do some inspection here. I have to look. What kind of works are you doing for the Lord? Has your life changed? Because you see, if I'm just out there looking to grow my subscriber count and I'm out there and I'm trying to um, get lots of people coming along and I want to, you know, get their money essentially like most preachers do. Um, I'm going to be telling people, I'll just, everybody I meet, oh, you're a Christian. Oh, you're a Christian. You know, just everybody's great. Everybody's fine. You know, uh, but I care too much about people's souls to do that. 
I'm not going to do that to people. Um, the Bible teaches that when you are born again, when you are genuinely saved, God at that point in time is going to start to use you for different missions. God will start to bring things into your life and he won't suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. You know, he won't, you know, have you go through t uh, trials and temptations and whatever if you can't handle it. Um, so, and you say, well, I've been through a whole bunch. Well, then God must trust you. Think about that. Um, but just wanted to put together a quick video like that. Um, there's no such thing as backloading works into salvation. The only way that that would be heretical is if you'd say that, you know, if I was teaching that uh, you get a, you make a profession of faith and then you go and then you have to make, you, you know, do good works or, or you can lose your salvation. Okay, then it would be heretical. But me saying, you better get to work, you better have a changed life when you get saved. Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make you fruitful so that you can um, have something at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't waste your life away. If God has truly, genuinely saved you, then get busy for the Lord. Start doing something for the Lord because he, re he will reward you. And, um, and the other thing is, you know, You'll have much better assurance of salvation. You won't doubt things and you won't um, question and you won't go through a lot of depression and whatever else if you're getting work done for the Lord. You know, when the Lord gives you a divine appointment, a real one, not one that's just forced because you're out trying to do your door-to-door -door duty to prove that you're a good Baptist or something. Um, but when you get a real true divine appointment, the Lord has set this thing up. There's no question about it. When you get one of those, Man, is it exciting. <laughs> You're going to want to jump up and down and, you know, when the, you can feel the Holy Spirit speaking through you and you can see somebody getting convicted and, and whatever. Tell them how to be saved. and I mean, oh man, it's wonderful when the Lord sets it up. When you set it up, well, then you have to just fake it and whatever else. So, <laughs> but that will be it. Um, need to get to the office. Have a few other little videos to do here quick. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and um, you know, please understand my heart, okay? Um, I want to make sure people are saved. I would rather err on the side of caution than, than be in error and tell people that they're saved when they're not really saved, when they're not really born again. Uh, Jesus didn't teach that the vast majority of people go to heaven. He taught that the vast majority of people end up in hell. And that's sad to me. That's, it's reality. It's what Jesus said would happen. But I want to try to do my very best to make sure that people understand biblical salvation, New Testament salvation. So get it sorted out between you and the Lord. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget that. And when he saves you, uh, your life will change. You'll know it. You'll have that feeling and it'll be, boy, I just can't get enough of the truth. And I just want to know more of truth. And, you know, the old hymn, more about Jesus would I know. More of his love to others show. More of his saving fullness see. More of his love who died for me. I think I have the words right. More, more about Jesus. More, more about Jesus. More of his saving fullness see. I think I messed up the words. More of his love that died for me. Who died for me? You have to look up the hymn there. Sorry if I didn't get it correct. But, um... You're going to want more of Jesus. There's a change. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Another old hymn. Um, so many old hymns. So many testimonies of saints down through the years. How they were just evil, wicked people and whatever else. And they got saved, they got born again, and everything changed. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. Why wouldn't you want to change? Very strange. All right, what do you want? My dog, Luther. Turning around. Can you say hi to the people? Oh, what's going on? <laughs> you camera shy? Oh boy, oh boy. All right. <laughs> okay, that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.